So this is a very simple, straightforward pattern. All you will need is some yarn, a hook that goes with it, scissors and darning needles. I have chosen Baby Alpaca by King Cole, which is a DK wool yarn. And to go with that, I use a 3.5 millimeter hook. But you can use whatever that has a little bit of stretch in it and play around with texture. If you want them to be chunky, use chunkier yarn. And if you want them to be more lazy, go with the thinner one. So whatever you prefer, try it, use it. And yeah, let's begin. Okay, so to begin, we start with a slip knot on our hook and then we're going to chain 10. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, almost, <laughs> eight, nine, and 10. This will decide how tall you want your wristband to be when finished. So if you want it taller, you can add more chains. And if you want it shorter, you can just decrease. So decide what you want and then meet me up for round number two. Okay, so for round number two, you have decided how tall you want your wristband to be. Then you are going to add a chain. This will be our turning chain that does not count as a stitch on its own in the pattern. And into the first, sorry, the last real chain stitch, you will now work a single crochet. So in the second one from the hook, make a single crochet. And do so in the following nine stitches so you will have 10 in total or as many as you have chosen to chain for your wristband so really easy and calming process let's see and nine and the last one just Grab hold of that little knot if you want to, the knot. And this will curl up, but it will all be sorted out as we add more rows. So don't worry about it. So work your way across and let's begin on row, row number three. Okay, so for row number three, we are going to make a turning chain again. And then we are going to work this entire round across the stitches that we just made but in the back loop of the stitches. So as you can tell, these stitches are made as a V and you are going into the backer one of them. So just enter your hook and go inside the stitch, grab the yarn and work a normal single crochet, but the only difference is that you're working in the back loop, not the entire stitch. So we are going to do that across four let's see almost a little bit tricky in the beginning before you got some body on this one let's see six seven eight nine and the final one can be tricky to see so just remember that you should have as many single crochets as you did chains, and then you will be fine. So do that and meet me up for round number four. So for round number four, we are doing exactly the same. We are chaining one and going into the first single crochets back loop and work a single crochet. And we are going to do exactly the same this row throughout and the following rows as well. So in total, you will have 32 rows. One row is the single crochets that we did, the normal single crochets that we made in the beginning chain. And the 31 other rows are all single crochets in the back loop with a turning chain. Um, continue. Uh, throughout so it's really really simple it's just working like this and then chaining one grabbing some yarn 
turning your work and going into the back loop. Hi, welcome back. So I will show you a neat little trick to know that you have exactly 32 rounds or how many rounds you want. Um, this is my backside and I can tell because the little line here is to my right. So I will just flip this one over uh, and keep the, the starting thread to my left. And then I'll see here is the chain, the little line that goes here. And in that we have the single crochet round. And here is our first single crochets in the back loop round. And so I know that this is row number two. So I can do two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, twelve, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-four, twenty-six, twenty-eight, thirty, and now here we are at thirty-two. And you can add some width to your wristband, or sorry, I will take this one. Uh, you can decide how how tight this will be on your wrist by adding or decreasing the number of rows you have here. Um, my tip to you is to keep it evenly numbered to add up with the pattern afterwards because these are sets of two stitches, even stitches. So if you're going to change the pattern, um, decrease by two or increase by two rows. Okay, so to join these two sides together, and to then be able to begin on the, the hand part, the hand section of the wrist warmers. You are simply chaining one as a turning chain. I have already done that. And then take a hook and find the first chain that you made. Just get it on the two lines there. It's not super, super careful way, way but it's... But you are also doing it through the corresponding final single crochet of round row 32. It's so hard to say round or row. <laughs> I usually work in rounds. So make a slip stitch. That happens all the time. I get confused. And then we go through the next section and into the next single crochet of the other side and work another slip stitch. And this we do all the way across. And then at the end, just go through the very last. <laughs> oh my. Okay, so this was a little bit, I don't know what happened. There we go. You should be able to lift your, your end up. So your wristband is now connected. And you will now turn it inside out. So the right side is facing out and there we go. It should now be able to slip through your wrist without problem, but not be too loose. So it drops off exactly the wrist <laughs> at the same time. So what we will do now is turn it back and then I will do it like this. I think, did I have a stitch marking somewhere? Yes, I did. I'll just put a little bit of a safekeeping here and then I will take my needle and work in the end because I don't want this one to have any reason to start breaking down on me and it's always easier to hide before you do the whole this section the shell section because you're yeah it's easy <laughs> Why? but it's for me it's easy and I like to have this done before I start the wrist itself um the hand part I mean I'm a little bit ahead today <laughs> I don't know what it is I have slept a little bit bad but it's nothing to worry about life with small children <laughs> so let's see there we go just work it back and forth Show some stitches here and when you're happy and think that it's secure, just cut it off. There we go. And that's it. We now have weaved in our ends. We have worked the piece together 
and we are ready for this part. So to begin this round, you simply do a fake double crochet or switch it out for chain two or three start, depending on how high your normal double crochets are. You can go with either. I just, I can show you how I did it. Um, I raised the loop up to the working height of a double crochet. Then I twisted back around the body of the stitch, grabbing the yarn and pulling it through the front, to the front, not through the front, to the front. Um, making sure I have two loops on the hook, grab my yarn and pull through both loops like that. This is my fake double crochet. So now, as I said, we are going to work in these sections alone. And so you'll find this is the single crochet of a previous round. I will go into this little space. Let's see if I have a needle to show you it. I go in here right next to the head. So literally through it all. If you find it hard to, to do, you can either just go into the legs, but I think that will be pulling it upwards. So I recommend go one down instead. So instead of going here, you can also go between the stitches to single crochets from before. So whatever works for you, you can do. And if you think it's hard, please remember that it's just this round and then you will be working in the new stitches that you're making, which is so much easier. So this is a little bit tricky. Just take it slow and steady and we'll get there. So in that first space, <laughs> do not do as me and get stuck with your hook, but just in that space there, go in, there we go. Grab your yarn and make your first shell, which consists of one and two double crochets. Oh my, it's splitting today. There we go. Chain one and then work two more double crochets into the same space. So your shells are two double crochets, chain one, two double crochets. Simple as that. Let's see, there we go. And then we're skipping this stretchy middle section and go into the next ridge here below that little turning chain single crochet space and work a double crochet. And then in the next work a shell. There we go. One, two, chain one. I don't know if it is the yarn or the hook or the combination, but right now it's getting a little bit stuck everywhere. I don't know. There we go. It usually goes really smoothly, but today was not that day. Okay, so there we have a second shell, two double crochets, chain one, two double crochets. And then you do another double crochet in the next section and followed by a shell. And in total, you should have, since you have 32 rows, you should have eight shells and eight double crochets in between them. Because we are skipping one section every time we make a stitch or a stitch combination. So do that. I have three now, do five more and meet me up to close this round, okay? There we go. So what I will do now is really simple to find my beginning double crochet, the top of it, or the, if you have made a chain two or three, find the top stitch of that and just work a slip stitch into that one. To close this round, there we have it. The first round is done. And now we're going to repeat the next row 
just as this one but in the new stitches okay so in your double crochet you work a double crochet for me it's a fake one and if you want to do the chain two or three here too why is this not working for me today i don't know <laughs> just because i'm filming i promise you it's that there we go so one and then in the next chain one space of the shell make a new shell so oh my here comes here comes the yarn <laughs> two chain one and then work two more double crochets to complete your shell so we work double crochets in double crochets and shells in shells so the next one is a double crochet and then we have a shell in the chain one space so two double crochets chain one two double crochets And then a double crochet in the double crochet so this round will consist of in total eight shells and eight double crochets single double crochets we might say because they are standing on their own the shells consist of double crochets too but to make it easier for us to count we just count the shells as one stitch Keep on doing this and meet me back to close this round, okay? Okay, so I'm on to my last shell here for this row round. <laughs> there we go. And eight. So just double check that you have eight shells and eight double crochets in between. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Perfect. And then you do as previously, you just slip stitch into the top of your double crochet. And then you repeat it all over and over again until you have eight rows or just as tall as you want it to be. So do that and I'll show you how to finish up. Okay, have fun. So I'm here at the final little sections of this gorgeous wrist warmer. So I'm just, I have done, this is the eighth row. So I'm almost, almost finished. And it's lucky because it's starting to get very cold here. And I need to turn up the heat on my radiators, I believe. It's so, so windy and it's quite rainy today. So this will be perfect. So there we go. The final little shell is done. You can cut the yarn. And then either finish with a slip stitch into your double crochet or do an invisible join to the second stitch and not your double crochet but into the first double crochet of the shell so I do it like I go under the two loops of the stitch the head of the stitch pulling it not too tightly but a bit going back into the stitches through the back loop and the third loop pulling it all together and then in the stitch that I skip the double crochet I simply go down to the base. There we go. And then I will I will go here, I believe. I always try to fasten off in the thickest place possible, which is this section where you have all the double crochets. So this is where I'm trying to travel to. And just go back and forth a few times into that stitch. There we go. 
when you feel if you don't want it to be too bulky here you can do back and forth here and then go down to the next and do back and forth there too I think this will be just fine for me they don't lay too heavy on top of the hand up here so I'm happy with that and then snip your yarn off and then just let it sink in with the other stitches and there we go just repeat the exact same steps to make your second one and then put them on and enjoy a walk in the sun or sitting in front of the computer working a bit. I hope you had a lot of fun. I hope this panel will bring you much joy and that you can watch some TV and just be calm or listen to an audiobook while you do. When you have done a few of these pairs, it will go just as easily as breathing i promise so <laughs> have a lovely day thank you so much for checking in and don't forget a new tutorial is coming to this channel every first friday of the month so stay tuned make sure to subscribe and give us the thumbs up if you like it see you soon bye